Hi, welcome to another video. So today, I want to talk about the new DeepSeek and Mistral models. Both of these are open models and are from really one of the oldest open source model companies. DeepSeek really made a big impact with their very cool V3 and R1 models. Mistral, on the other hand, was one of the first Western companies to make good models that were open. Mistral made models like Mistral Nemo, which was one of the best models to run locally. It was very good for the 32B size. However, they drifted away from that with their very non-permissive licenses, not open sourcing the bigger models and so on. They really were not very good in those terms. And when you used to consider those licenses with the model performance, it used to fall apart very quickly. But Mitral has launched two new models, which are Mitral Large 3 and Ministral 314B, 8B, and 3B. These models are supposedly SOTA, based on the very nitpicked benchmarks that they have shared here. And I mean the models that they have put in comparison here tell you that they don't seem to be very confident. One of the major things to consider and know about this model is that this is a non-reasoning model. It doesn't do any kind of reasoning. This is a very raw and simple model. It is a mixture of experts that activates about 41 billion parameters out of the total 645 billion parameters. This is based on the same architecture as DeepSeek V3, and it is compatible with almost all libraries that support it. However, this is a fully new base pre-trained model and just basically borrows the architecture from DeepSeek, which is not anything bad. Now, since we are on the topic of benchmarks, let's talk about the new DeepSeek release as well. DeepSeek has launched their non-experimental DeepSeek V 3.2. This is their new version of the model that changes a lot of the architecture. It now uses their DSA, or DeepSeek Sparse architecture. The biggest bottleneck for large language models right now is attention. As you increase the context length, basically how much information the model can hold in its head, the computational cost usually explodes. It makes running these things locally, or even in the cloud, incredibly expensive. As you increase the context length, basically how much information the model can hold in its head, the computational cost usually explodes. It makes running these things locally, or even in the cloud, incredibly expensive. DeepSeek introduced something called DeepSeek Sparse Attention, or DSA. Instead of the model paying attention to every single token equally, which is the standard vanilla attention mechanism we've used since the transformer paper, DSA uses a lightning indexer. Think of it like a spotlight. It quickly scans the context and decides, okay, these are the top K most important tokens relevant to this query, and it ignores the rest. It basically allows you to process massive amounts of context with a fraction of the compute. We are talking about reducing the complexity significantly while keeping the performance of a dense model. This isn't just a theoretical optimization. It means this model is incredibly cheap to run, even at long contexts of up to 128,000 tokens. But it doesn't just stop there. The real headline here is the Speciale model. DeepSeek V 3.2 Speciale is designed specifically for reasoning. They took the constraints off. They relaxed the length penalties during training and let the model think for as long as it needs to. This is not something that you set up in the model parameters or anything during inference. It is a different checkpoint altogether. You'll find both the general and the special variant weights on Hugging Face. Now, it also aces a lot of benchmarks as well. Anyway, let's check it out on my own benchmarks. Both of these models are now available on OpenRouter and KyloCode as well, and you can check it out through there. 
and both of these models are quite good at tool calling. So, this shouldn't be a bad experience at all. Anyway, now, in my king bench, if we look at the Mistral large model first, then the first question was to create a floor plan for a 1,585 square feet land in 3D. And well, it didn't do well on this prompt. It was not good at all. So, there's that. Then we got the SVG of a panda question, and it kind of made a panda, but the body is very finicky and not a good generation. After this, we've got a pokeball in 3JS, and this one is also not good. I mean, the objects are all over the place, the dimensions are wrong, and it's not a good generation at all. Next, we've got a chessboard with an autoplay option, and well, it also doesn't work at all. Then, we've got a Minecraft clone in Kandinsky style, and this is also not something usable. It lacks a lot and isn't great. However, the majestic butterfly flying in the garden is kind of fine. I mean, it's not anywhere near the soda, but it's still fine. Then we've got the Rust CLI tool, and that also doesn't really work. The Blender script for the Pokeball is also a fail here. The math questions are all a fail. So, these are a bit disappointing results for sure. Now, let's look at the deep seek answers before moving to the leaderboard. I'll be talking about the non-reasoning variant because it performs worse on my benchmarks due to some weird reasons, like it gets confused and whatnot. This has been happening with DeepSeek's previous models as well. Anyway, if we look at the results, then the floor plan isn't even a three-dimensional floor plan. It's just gibberish and text. So, this is pretty sad to see. The SVG Panda is better than Mistral Large, but not anywhere near the SOTA models yet. The Pokeball in 3JS is, however, quite good. The only thing missing is the button on the Pokeball, but that's kind of fine. So, it's good nonetheless. Then we got the chessboard, and it is quite good as well. It works seamlessly, the colors are kind of fine, and you get a log of moves made, and the autoplay makes sensible moves. So, this is quite good. Then we got the Kandinsky-style Minecraft clone, and it doesn't work. So, this is sad to see. After this, we have the majestic butterfly flying in the garden, and it is not good. It looks like it was made in 2000 or something. After this, we have the Rust CLI tool, and that also doesn't work at all, and the same thing goes with the Blender script. The two math questions are also not solved, but the riddle is solved quite well. Now, let's have a look at the leaderboards now. The new DeepSeek scores the 11th position on the leaderboard, which is above GPT 5.1, Codex, and GLM. So, this is quite good considering that they aren't really pre-training new base models. It is just new experiments thrown on top of the same old base model of DeepSeek V3. So, this is quite interesting to see. The reasoning variant is quite bad and scores a lot lower. It never finishes the answer via the API, and via their platform, it finishes. But the code is quite buggy. None of them work, and it is not a good experience. The reasoning of DeepSeek is still very finicky and does more harm in coding than good. Mistral Large scores the 27th position on the leaderboard, which is kind of fine, but not the best. The stealth models on Kilo and Klein and Rue seem to be their codestral model, and that seems a bit good. So, let's see when we see that. That is majorly about it. Many of you were asking me for my thoughts, and I think that GLM and Minimax are still way better, and Kimi is also great. So, there's not much need to use this at all. But, it's still good to see a good new model as well that is open. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!